Okay, here's question number seven. Assume the population is 40, 45, 47, 53. This is much better because we keep using sample or populations of size three, and this is at least a population of sample size four. But we're still kind of being a little bit boring because we're using samples of size two. Think about why though, because remember if the uh, population size is n, um, let's use a different one. Let's say the population size is k then the sample size n will be the power to tell us how many uh, samples we'll be able to um, possibly make. And so before when we were having samples of size or populations of size 3 and n was 2, then we get 9 possibilities, 3, uh, three squared. This time we're going to get 16, right? So they've got all 16 listed, 8 and 8. Best part is we can just open it up here in StackCrunch. Scoop that over a little bit. <clears throat> um, and then I can do the work that I've done before. I hit stat, summary stats, rows, grab the two. Um, you got to hold shift or use control. I'm going to this time find out sample median, so I'm only going to use median. I'll store it back into the table, compute. OK, there it is. Um, I will list those out. And I just want to make sure I represented all of them uniquely. Do a quick double check. Those are all the medians, x tilde. And then their probabilities. Get those all listed out. And I'm putting them in fractional form um, because it's easier for you to make sure that I've got them all. I can just add the numerators 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 16 16 is 100%. Um, so it, the total, remember, should add up to be 1 for the area under the curve. OK, so then um, actually I'll simplify those fractions. And I can see that I either got a 1 16th or 1 8th probability all the way down. If it was one of my original population values, and this is because all four of my population values, 40, 45, 47, 53, were unique values anyway, distinct. Um, since they're all separate like that, the only time I'm ever going to be able to, to get a median of one of them is for the sample that turns out to be the, the number picked first. And then since there's replacement, it's put back in and then picked again. So like 40, 40. That's the only way I'm going to be able to get the median. Um, of the two to be just the number itself. Because remember, median, when there's just two numbers, is the same thing as its average. So 47, 47 is going to be the only time I'm going to get 47. So that's one out of the 16 possible samples of size two. Any other time, if it's not one of those four, any other time, I'm going to get uh, two copies. So anyway, those are my simplified fractions. And actually, I need to put them in. Um, Decimal form, I believe, for stat crunch. If you're putting them into your calculator, you would put this exact same distribution in. Uh, list 1, list 2, and then you do your 1 bar stats with list 1, comma list 2. And you can put them in this form, and it'll convert them to decimals for you. But I don't think, and I'll try right now, that it will do, do it for me now. So if it will, uh, I should be able to see compute the expression. In fact, uh, before I do that, I'm going to give myself some more proper notation. This would be x tilde. OK, so I've got the um, each sample median, and then the probability of each sample median. And then I'll hit, well, I want it to show up in this column. Compute expression, build the product of all of them. Hit OK. And yeah, it can't compute. It doesn't understand that these are, it thinks that this is text. It doesn't understand that these are supposed to be the numbers 1 16th. So let me replace all those really fast. And then we'll try again. So we'll compute an expression of their products. All right now, then there is the uh, entire probability distribution. Here is their products so that we can add that up and um, get the mean of the sampling distribution of sample medians. 
since I need to start typing all this stuff in, I'm going to go ahead and take a break and put all, put all of them in over here. Okay, there we go. Got them all in. And then compare the population median to the mean of the sample medians. Oh, you know, I didn't do that. Okay, for the population median, by the way, that, that's easy. We've got one, two, three, four numbers in our population. They are already sorted. So remember, if there's an even number of, um, of data points of, of values, you just find the middle, the um, middle two, and average them. So that's 46. 46 would be the actual median of the population. Okay, but then uh, I need to add all these up. So let me do that. In case you're wondering how to do this, I actually just realized it. So some of you guys probably realized it before, but if you watched earlier videos, I was typing all that in and doing it the long way. You can do stat, summary statistics, uh, by column and we'll choose that column of the products and then just choose sum. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I wasn't ever thinking about that before but so that's 46.25 compare that to the mean from the population and you'll see that they do not match right and we didn't expect them to because medians don't target the population parameter. It's not a it's an un, it's a biased estimator. So anyway, sample medians. So the population median is equal to blah blah blah. No, the population median is equal to half. No. All we care about is it does not equal. It's not half, not double, nothing special like that. And you you can see clearly that it's not half or double. We've got 46 and we got 46 and a quarter. In fact, depending on how the numbers turned out, we may have had a case where they did equal, but then that would have been coincidence because we've already learned this theoretically. Okay, do the sample medians target the population median? Nope. And this is what we were supposed to learn. The sample medians do not target the population median, so sample medians are biased estimators because the mean of the sample medians does not equal the mean of the population median. Uh, the, the does not equal the population median. All right. Um, wow, these are a whole bunch of sampling distributions. You know what? I cannot remember why I burdened you so many with so many of these, but on the actual final, there are, there are not so many of these. But let's imagine that we have two births, and um, the sample space is already worked out there. You could either have the first child be a boy and the second child be a boy, or first child be a boy, second child be a girl, first girl, second boy, or girl, girl. Or in our case, if we have three kids, we have girl, girl, girl. So assume that four, uh, that those four outcomes are equally likely. Construct a table that describes the sampling distribution of sample proportion of girls for uh, from two births. Um, does the mean of the sample proportions equal the proportion of girls in two births? Uh, actually, we can answer that already. Yes, it will. Does the result suggest the sample proportion is an unbiased estimator? Yes, it is, because we know that proportions are an unbiased estimator. But either way, let's do it. So um, if you're trying to calculate the portion of girls, your first sample is going to have zero girls. So that's zero out of two children. Then you're going to have one out of two, you know, one girl out of two, one girl out of two, and then two girls out of two. So your possibilities are going to be zero, uh, 50, 50, or 100%. And the probabilities that correspond to that are going to be um, one of the four can happen that way, two of the four, in other words, one half can happen that way, and then one out of the four. So 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.25, that's the probability distribution. And so then do the does the mean of the sample 
proportions equal the proportion of the girls in two births. Okay, so we'd multiply this and multiply this and multiply that. Well, that is actually pretty easy. Again, I'm kind of doing it in my head this time because 0 times 1 fourth is 0. 0.5 times 1 half is a half of a half, and that's a quarter. And then 1 times 1 half, well, that's a that's another quarter. I'm sorry, 1 times a quarter is a quarter. So we're adding a quarter and a quarter. We're going to get 2 quarters or 1 half. So the mean of the distribution of proportions is 1 half. But then if you go to the actual population, what's the proportion of girls that you could have here? Well, um, you could have, uh, out of two children, you could have one um, girl or no girls or um, or all girls. So anyways, your, your uh, proportion of having a girl out of two births is one half also, assuming that, that you know that the outcomes are equally likely. So uh, yes, they should both be equal. Yes, both the mean and the s mean of the sample proportions and the mean of population portion are no, not one third, one half. And they are equal. So do they suggest that it's an unbiased estimate? Yes. Okay, and do we have time for number nine? Yeah, I think so. The population of current statistics students has ages with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. So they're just, they're not going to tell us what they are. They're unknown. But they're giving us the notation for it. Samples of statistics students are randomly selected so that there are exactly 42 students in each sample. For each sample, the mean age is computed. Okay, so they're actually finding the, the average of these samples of size 42. What does the central limit theorem tell us about the distribution of those mean ages? Perfect. Okay, so I would go to maybe the review card. If I'm like nervous during the test and I can't remember this, this idea. And maybe I'll remember about between the, that, that 30 um, sample size mark when we're choosing between Z and T. And if sigma is known or unknown, I might stop there and think, okay, well, let's, let's see. Sigma for us is unknown, right? And um, we have a sample size greater than 30. So we'd be using like the T distribution, which is what allowed us to ever have the, uh, which the central limit theorem allowed us to ever even be able to do that. Um, but I would just go up here and I'd try to find the central limit theorem. Ah, oh, there it is. And it says, that the mean of the distributions of sample, media, sample means is equal to the expected mean, the population mean, mu. And the mean of the sample distribution of sample means is equal to the population standard deviation, I'm sorry, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So our n is certainly greater than 30. Um, which are all of these, okay. The sampling distribution of mean ages can be approximated by a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. No, nope. no. Nope. Um, so let's see here. The sampling distribution of the mean ages is precisely a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of 42. Um, I think they're messing with me by saying precisely like that. So I would go with C. And I'm using this based on that um, animation that we talked about before where we had the sampling distributions and we keep running them and kept running them and kept running them. And we saw that the more you run them as n tends to infinity, we would find that the that we would we would get this standard deviation. The standard deviation would get skinnier and skinnier. Well, would get appropriately skinny by a factor of square root of 42. Okay, that's those are questions seven through nine. Let me just take a pause there. We'll go ahead and submit these. See if they're right. 
Um, we only answered three questions, and seven through nine, they are right. So this video, which is roughly 15 minutes, we'll cover those three.